Conductor Pro Animation Quick Start Guide and Configuration Demonstration. Do you hate following directions? Think most rules don't apply to you? Want to try it first and fix it later? Or have you ever heard the term crash course? Well then this video is for you. It's just enough information from each of the core topics necessary to get your project hastily made and out the door in this 20 minute I forgot to do my homework overview. So pay attention and watch carefully, it goes by fast. We recommend you watch each individual topic in this course section on the plane ride home and maybe think about your questionable life choices going forward. Prerequisites, if you're feeling overwhelmed, would be the Vagal hardware setup and configuration videos, but we know you're not going to watch those first. So let's get started. Setting up Conductor Pro to record a simple animation or basic lighting show is just a few simple steps. Launching a new Conductor timeline looks very similar to this with a default layout and user interface configuration. Please note that this can be changed and saved as a user-specific profile if you prefer your layout to be slightly different. To make sure I'm on a new project, I'll hit File, New Timeline, or press Ctrl N. This gives me a clean interface for both connections to my devices as well as the recording of my animation or lighting data. The first thing I want to do is to scan any devices that are available on my system. This can be either over ArtNet or USB or WaggleNet over a hardwired network connection. In this case, I only have a Pro Commander 2 in the IP range of 10.00.101. If my machine is set to a static IP of 10.00. something, for example, my machine is 120, this will show up and show any other Waggle devices also accessible on the network. To see my device and begin testing and adjusting any of these outputs right away, I can simply left click to highlight this individual setup. My hardware network tab is very similar to either Mac Configurator or Waggle Configurator for Windows in that I can change my IP, subnet, or ports as required. I also have my familiar console here to get any diagnostic information on the device. We recommend for simple shows and installations to click on the Input Output tab and start firing any of the outputs you believe to be connected. You should see this respond in real time on your device or your connected figure as you would expect. I can also click on my DMX tab if I have any DMX devices associated and test and adjust those as well. Assuming this works as expected, I can right click and hit add to timeline. If your device shows up as unknown or you would like to add it manually, you can also right click under the new show and add a device. Please choose Pro Commander, Pro Commander LX, or an individual Pro IO module. Once you have this connected, at any time you can go back to devices for on-the-fly test and adjust, but you're pretty much ready to start laying out your data and channels. Since I have a Pro Commander, I can add digital, analog, or audio channels to my project. For this particular show, I have five digital animation channels, a single RGB LED, and an audio channel. To do this, I'm going to start by adding my audio channel, selecting Add Channel and Audio Channel. I'm also going to add a channel range for my digital channels, which I don't need quite 32, nor does my device support it, so I'll change my first channel to 1 and my last channel to 5. Upon doing this, I have all of my outputs right here at my control. Earlier, I tested each of these outputs to make sure that, for example, this was my mouth, this was my eye blink, this was my eye left, this was my eye right, and this was my head nod. Here in the console, you can also see each of these commands going in and out of the Pro Commander and actually verify that they are in fact working. I'm going to go ahead and label these in my layout. As we discussed, eyes left, eyes right. Oops, and I forgot one. So I'm going to go back here and do eyes blink. Very simple to change eyes left, eyes right, and as discussed, head nod. Clicking back to my timeline, I can see these have also updated in my actual tracks. I can change this labeling anywhere I want just by double clicking and adjusting that particular output's name. 
We still do have the reference here for what the hardware point of connection would be. In this case, digitals one, two, three, four, and five. Once again, I could always test those individually here to make sure that they are correctly functioning. At this point, I'm gonna put my audio channel aside and just make sure that I actually have some movement uh, for these individual channels. I can immediately just start clicking on the timeline to get high and low points that I can select and adjust later. For the mouth, I'll just play my timeline by hitting the play button here or pressing the space bar and ensure that my timeline actually does respond. In this case, I do see my mouth move go high and I see my mouth move go low. We mentioned adding also a RGB fixture, which I'm going to add as a color channel. A color channel just simply allows me to set all my red, green, and blue channels at one time. And I am actually going to utilize the analog channel on uh, my particular character in this example. So I've got a character with an audio channel, a mouth, eyes, head, and uh, DMX RGB data, as well as an analog channel. So I've got this, I've got my project, I'm ready to go. Now, how do I record this in real time? To set up my basic configuration for a real time adjustment, I'm gonna go under the configuration for my recording groups. First, I need to specify an input controller. Because I just mostly have digitals, I'm gonna select keyboard. I've done this under the input controllers and I've checked keyboard. Now, in this case, I just wanna actually have uh, a few digital inputs here. I'm gonna name these uh, mouth, I'm going to name this eyes blink. I'm going to name this head nod. And then I'll just call this one left and right. Okay, so I've got some basic controls here. Now, I also like to have a special keyboard key for punch in and punch out because I don't like actually using my mouth as my punch in, but that is also an option. So I'll do punch in and punch out, and I've got these defined here. Now, if I did have analog inputs or MIDI or whatever, I could do an inverted or scaled value as you would expect. But I know for most of my projects, I just want these basic configurations and a punch in and a punch out. I'm gonna create a new recording group, and you might ask, why are my recording groups different from my inputs? Didn't I just set this up? And the answer to this is simple. You can have multiple inputs assigned to different recording groups. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to use in one group the A key for the mouth, but in another group the A key for the eye blink. This allows me to actually set this up. As I've selected here in this recording group, I have a standard keyboard that I'm going to assign to a mouth and assign to a record feature. This red X prompts me whenever there is a problem with my setup. In this case, I've assigned an input but I haven't assigned an output. I'll drag and drop this particular output, which is mouth, and I'm good to go there. I'll do the same again for eyes blink in this particular recording group, and I'll drop this. Oops, I didn't change this to record, so it does prompt me that I have an error, and I want to set this to eyes blink. I also want a specific punch in and punch out, as I've described, and I'll assign these particular keys, as we've discussed, to punch in and punch out. If you don't know what punch in and punch out are just yet, don't worry about it, we'll cover that in just a moment. Now I'm gonna go back to the view tab and you're gonna notice that I have these particular outputs assigned to my A key, my B key, uh, and of course my uh, punch in, which I believe is F and G. Yeah, F and G there. Um, okay, now when I actually wanna record the mouth move, for example, I do have existing data here. I can highlight by left clicking and dragging over this area. Once again, that's left click and drag and releasing to highlight all these points. I can hit delete or press simply this red X to eliminate my points. Now at zero zero, I want to actually punch in and record this particular animation. To do this, I've decided I actually want to rehearse this first. Once you click the rehearse mode and you are punched in, so I actually want to punch in either by clicking this or pressing G, you'll notice that my head movement highlights in blue. Once I have this assigned and I'm actually in blue, I am getting real-time animation for the purpose of test and adjust. I can practice, I can get my character moving, I can see if things actually do make sense. If, for example, I were to roll this timeline, in this case, it will actually lay down that data 
in the timeline as rehearsal only. Once I stop the timeline and jump back, that data is erased. If I want to save it, I can go into the recording mode, play the timeline, punch in, and record my data. Not only do I see this in real time, but I also will get the actual ability to save that data. Now I have my timeline set to jump back to that start point. However, if I had another setting in my default template, I would be able to see this actually uh, stop or go to a specific marker afterwards. Now you'll notice I have all these playback points and these playback points are capable of playing back my show in real time as discussed. Okay, again, it is jumping back to my loop point, which we'll cover in a moment. Now, I, of course, I can zoom in by using any keyboard shortcuts or these arrows here that I define, and you'll see the data that I have recorded. I can edit this, again, by highlighting a specific group and hitting X to delete, or I can select that group and I can drag it. I can move it up and down if it were analog or digital, it will just go to zero. And I can actually slide a group or a section of, of data points left or right in my timeline. This is the basic recording that I can do for a particular move. Now let's say, for example, I wanted to record a different move, but leave this. I can move my cursor to the start point. I can punch in and using the B key, now I'm recording the data for this particular movement. Punching out allows me to actually save that data independently of what I have recorded in the past. This provides me the basic operation I need for adjusting and recording my actual real-time animation data. Of course, under your recording groups and your input groups, you can set up any device that Windows actually detects as a valid input device. This includes MIDI, keyboard, mouse, USB, human interface devices, as well as most DirectX supported input devices. Once you see this here, you'll be able to configure it in real time and see those results as you press or activate that data point. Now that we've got the recording basically figured out, we actually need to decide how we want to program our show because we don't normally want to take our eyes off the figure or the lighting element to pause, stop, and rewind the timeline. Conductor Pro has a very interesting and innovative feature as to how to accomplish this. By default, pressing the space bar will stop and start your timeline as shown. You'll notice that there's a little red marker that kind of follows along behind you. If I press control space, which is a default keyboard shortcut, you can change this at any time, this will jump me back instantaneously to that same marker where we originally started. If I decide not to do this because I'm happy with this animation, I can press the space bar once to stop and again to start it moving that marker forward. Now, why would I do this? The reason is if I want to loop this section over and over again, rather than hitting space bar twice, I can look at this and I can say, okay, I want to stop. Eh, it wasn't quite good enough. And I can hit control space to jump back to that other point. If I did decide it was okay, once again, pressing space will stop that and space again will advance that marker forward. At any point, of course, I can pick up my mouse and drag it back, but that's what we're trying to avoid here. Additionally, if I want to set a temporary loop point as my stop, I can hit Alt Space. You'll notice that it jumps back to that loop point, as you'll see here, every time I actually hit that red marker. It does pause by default if I put that uh, marker in and it is not colored in. Now, if I right click this, this will allow me to actually lock this particular marker in place. And the same right clicking with this will allow that to be forward. Okay. So this allows, again, this to be in a fixed location for a given period of time. You can also set things like continuously loop. So as an option, if I have this marker here, uh, this will continuously loop over and over again as I decide. If I just continue to hit the space bar, it will move this forward or backwards as we would expect. Okay. So we've got a method for recording uh, my digital animation. What about my RGB light? Well, again, if you have a DMX or a joystick input that is analog, you can record that either at a device or channel level or through the DMX recording tab, which we'll cover in later videos. However, if I just wanna get this to be a red fixture, all I do is double click to get a marker in the timeline here. 
and I set it to red. If I want that to be blue a few seconds later, I choose the color picker and set that to blue. Of course, as you would imagine, green is the same. And if I need black in the interim, I would just hit black. As I drag these markers forward and backward, I can control fade in time and of course the distance between each of these variables. The color channel at its core is simply a routing for channels one, two, and three in a typical RGB fixture. As with any DMX device within Conductor Pro, this can be set to either 8-bit or 16-bit values. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm happy with this, I went from red to blue to black to green. I'm going to go ahead and use this particular item here, the lock unlock, to make sure I don't actually mess up this channel in the future. Next to it here on the left is a simple mute and unmute if I wanted to not play that back in real time. So I'll fold that up, I'm pretty happy with that. As far as analog goes, I could record this with a digital or analog input as coming in through my input controllers or my recording group, or I can simply grab my freeform pencil tool. This allows me to draw a simple line in any analog track that creates the data points as you would expect. If I want to edit this, I can draw a line, for example, across and get a very flat point. Turning this off, of course, would allow me to actually move this around. And as you see here, I can do this in a curve, linear, or step fashion by the points I have selected. This gets into pretty advanced data for a basic character, but you will notice that it is very, very simple to do so. Of course, with selected points, we can also do certain things like optimize, scale, shift, or invert values. The only other one we're going to cover in this particular video is the locking of vertical or horizontal for the purpose of adjusting the opposite effect. That sounds complicated, but it's actually quite easy. If I lock this horizontally, this will allow me to actually move this on the horizontal plane without changing my value. Conversely, the other, co other command will allow this to move up and down so that I can scale a group or range of values without actually changing their position in time. This is very powerful for editing analog movements on the fly and definitely a very unique feature of Conductor Pro. Now let's take a look at audio editing, recording, and synchronization with my real-time animation. So I know I want to actually line up uh, my audio track here that I've imported, which I import just by selecting Load Audio Resource, into my timeline for the purpose of, again, my animation sync. I'll import this and I'll drag and drop it into this timeline. And you'll notice that I have an OGG file. The Pro Commander supports OGG and other formats where required, but the card export normally from Conductor Pro is an OGG. So I've actually brought in an audio file from a previous project, but this could be WAV, MP3, or any other recognizable format. You'll see quickly in here that I do have some sound on both my left channel and my right channel. One of the unique features about Conductor Pro is that it will allow you to route this information as required based on the number of actual inputs or outputs that I have on my device as well as my file. We'll come back to this later, but you can see this as a two-channel file with the left channel and the right channel here. Of course, I can slide this left and right in time, and I can sync it up with my animation or go back and real-time record this data to the pulses that are here. If I need to edit, I can grab from the right-hand side and pull that in, trimming that. I can grab from the left-hand side and trim that. Or I can select and right-click here and say, cut audio at current time. What this will do is allow me to actually split this into two separate clips. Regardless of how many audio channels, tracks, or cuts I make, Conductor Pro will mix these down in real time to the card so that I have a flattened and mixed audio file. For more information on this or the routing of these channels to specific hardware devices, please see our, our later tutorial on the actual audio routing. For now, I will show you, however, that I do have two channels in, the left and the right, and those are going into my outputs for one to one and two to two. If I wanted those to be down mixed or flattened, I could simply assign one to one and two to two, or of course on our polyphonic or LX units, this would grow and expand with that particular piece of equipment. Okay, so I've got my show perfect. I've got a simple audio file, some simple animation, an RGB light uh, down here in my random analog channel that I am creating for future use. All right, I wanna get this on the SD card and I don't wanna have to create a lot of uh, trouble and, and uh, challenge in doing so. 
I've reduced the number of tabs up here I'm actually using because I've decided I'm not going to use DMX record. I'm not going to use a number of other things in here. While I can close or open these from the menu and the, and the X's that are available, I can also move these around. If I decided as a fact I wanted the recording group up at the top, I can now drag this up here uh, if I don't want that visible while I'm actually recording. It doesn't matter. Any of these can be moved around or adjusted. And of course, your layout could be saved. For more information on this, please do see our later uh, video training about uh, layouts and default configurations. But for now, I want to export. And to do this, I can either open an existing export project or I can create a new one. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one so that you can see this step by step. The first thing I'll do is hit new project. Now that I've done this, I'm going to go back and simply add any HFX, which are our timeline files, to this project. Here, I'll just add number one. Within number one, I have a few options that I can select. And when I say number one, I actually mean index number one or show number one from the card. The Pro Commander has a very unique index number which allows us to trigger both over UDP, variables, and our inputs for the digital, actual, the digital starts of the actual show. So I've had my path for show one. I've got my index set. I do want to convert and sync the audio, which is an automatic function. I do want this to auto start, so I want this to start on the power up of the device. However, if I change my mind, I can uncheck this and I can actually define how it starts. Let's take a look at these real quick. Remote input is my digital inputs. IRRC is my IR remote control. Time is either a delay time from startup, for example, 10 seconds or 15 seconds, or using our built-in real-time clock where available, or I can compare a variable or constant. Because variables are an extended feature, we won't cover those here, but I could, for example, just say on input one, close, what do I want to do? I want to start it, okay? Pretty straightforward. But as I mentioned, we're just going to select auto start. And while I'm thinking about it, why don't we go ahead and loop? Now I'm ready to export this, and I'm going to select both a local and a remote target. So here I'm going to make a card image, okay? And I'll call that card image. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make a backup folder here. Now why I do this is because every time you export, you are overwriting the data that was previously there. Our best practice is to write to both an SD card on your machine, which is what you'll use to transfer it to the Pro Commander, or, and in addition actually, um, a local directory that you can use for backing up in the future. You can set your OGG quality if you have a high intensity application, but we recommend normally leaving it at five. Once I've got this file, index, and start condition associated, I'll just simply hit the start button. In my card image, there's a number of files and locations here that I will review. I have a show file, that's my WM1. I have an audio file, if that audio file is present. And I have a control.ini. In my control.ini, this is also covered later, I will have a time value and the show number that I'm starting. This is an entire separate video that talks about the Wagle ASCII language. However, for now, you can just know that this means after zero seconds on startup, restart show one in a loop. Of course, there is much, much more to Conductor Pro that we have not covered today, but this gives you a general idea of how I would start a basic show with a simple stereo audio channel, a Pro Commander 2, five digitals, an RGB DMX lighting fixture, and a single analog channel. For more information about specific conductor features and extended options within what we covered today, please visit faq.wagle.support.